89 pounds, pro record, 39 wins, 9 defeats, 2 draws. He has 24 knockouts from Detroit, Michigan, former WBC light heavyweight champion, Dennis Andre. Andre. 10 rounds, cruiserweight. Okay, Dennis. Okay, gentlemen, I want you to know I'll be in charge of the bout at all times. You listen to my command to break, break cleanly. If you score a knockdown, go to the neutral corner. Don't come out till I signal. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. Come out boxing in the belt. There's the tail of the tape. Dennis Andres, the bigger of the two fighters. Eddie Neblett came in at a trim 187. He's been having some weight problems of late. Andres, 35 years of age. So if he's going to do it, acquire a championship belt in the cruiserweight division he has to get started right away and he's set for round one both fighters wearing yellow trunks neblet trimmed in blue andres the taller of the two men with the red trim and very interesting story dennis andres his last fight highly controversial as he surrendered the wbc light heavyweight championship before his home fans a loss on a decision to jeff harding and as we look at the knockout ratios, both guys have knocked out listen half of their opponents. Yes, Andres complained that he thought the judges in London were going too far out of their way to prove that it was not a hometown decision. They were not hometown judges. He th thinks he caught really the short end of that uh, of their consideration in that one. Heavy punches being thrown early stages of round one. This is not a feeling out process unless you're into pain. Andres going to the body, but Neblet holding his ground. Neblet trained by the venerable Larry Kent, who is a believer in this guy, says he's ready to make a mark in the cruiserweight ranks. Well, he says in this particular fight, he's got a pretty good fight plan. He knows what he has to do to beat Andres. Neblet has had problems with weight in the past. He started out his career, really, as a junior middleweight, coming out of the Olympics, where he was the first uh, native of Barbados to fight in the Olympics, along with his stablemate, Ed Pollard. And he lost what was the most, one of the most controversial decisions of the 84 Olympics to eventual silver medalist Virgil Hill at 165 pounds. Virgil Hill, an outstanding boxer who recently lost his light heavyweight championship of the world to another Emmanuel Stewart fighter. And you see, of course, that's Thomas Hearns, the guy who Andres has fought as well. And the interesting thing is you see the Kronk name on the uh, trunks of Andre, uh, Andres, who is a member of the Kronk team. He joined the Kronk team just a few months after he went to Detroit and lost his light first uh, WBC light heavyweight title on a 10th round knockout to Hearns. Emmanuel Stewart was impressed with Andres, brought him into camp, brought him into the Kronk gym, has been directing his career ever since. Eddie Neblett now coming on. Hasn't backed down one bit from Dennis Andres, obviously not intimidated by the championship status of this fighter. Neblett coming upstairs with the uppercut. Andres, an excellent defensive fighter, blocked a couple of those shots. Well, Neblett's a pretty good technician. There's no question. This is no walkover for Andres. Carrying about 13, 14 extra pounds is Andres into this fight. He hasn't experienced, really, this kind of weight before. Round one, pretty much dead even. Andres may be a, a slight advantage as he's done some good work to the body. As we approach final 30 seconds of this round. Scheduled for 10 in the cruiserweight division. Oddly enough, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Charles Harding and Andres may meet again as cruiserweights. Yeah, word is Harding's giving up his current light heavyweight title to go to 195 pounds. Closing moments of round one. This one's scheduled for 10. Neblin and Andres, it's our main event. Competitive performance from Eddie Neblett in round one. This is round two of our main event tonight on Schlitz Malt Liquor Fight Night. Dennis Andres, three times he's held the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship belt against Eddie Neblett. Both fighters wearing yellow trunks. Andres with the Kronk Jim moniker oh, emblazoned on his shorts. I thought that was a competitive first round. I gave Andres a 10-9 advantage, but really just a slight 10-9 advantage. As Neblett is holding his own, and he's really not backing down one bit. Larry Kent told Neblett to throw uppercuts in this round. Let's see if he carries out that part of the fight plan in the second round. The composition of Dennis Andre's boxing fundamentals, you can see it in evidence. Round one in the early stages of round two. Good defensive fighter. Uses the left hand extremely well to set up his combinations. 
and in the early portion of this fight, content to go downstairs and try and take the legs of Eddie Neblet away. Anderson is not, I mean, I'm sorry, Andres is not really a stylist. He's more of a crude type of fighter throughout his career, a guy who's come up the hard way. Neblet is really more of the boxer, and it's Neblet that's got to steer clear of Andres' power and do things to neutralize him. Neblet doing a good job of following Larry Kent's fight strategy. Giving Andre some head movement and then trying to follow that up by coming upstairs. It appears that Neblet would have to close the distance some on Dennis Andre as he has a reach advantage here. Watch your head, guys. Come on, and he gets tagged as he's backing off. Brian Gary was telling the two fighters to watch their heads and avoid a butt. And as Neblet was listening to the instruction, he caught a grazing left hand from Dennis Andres. And you know, when you back away from a fighter, don't ever drop your right hand because against the guy who's a veteran, well, against anybody, really, you get nailed the, with a left hook. You're wide open for it. You mentioned that Neblin has to get close to Andres. That's the dilemma that Ed faces in this fight. He gets close to close down the reach, reach advantage but leaves his body within range of and Andres. And uh, Neblin's body looks like uh, it could use a little hardening up as... Uh, you know, he's really not in his most natural of weight division. Well, Larry Kent's a real character, and uh, I think he was worried that Eddie Neblett was going to inhale the buffet early this morning before the weigh in. <laughs> but he checked in at a relatively trim 187. Uh, we saw him. Uh, he was scheduled to fight on the card a month ago. and was 19 pounds over the contracted weight. They said, hey, listen, Eddie, go back to the gym and get serious. Come back and fight some more. But he's been training very diligently for this one, and he knows this is a big opportunity for him tonight. He can write his career with just one match and a win over Dennis Andres tonight. Closing seconds of round two. We are scheduled for 10 cruiserweights, Dennis Andres and Eddie Yogi Bear Devlin. This is round three, our main event in the cruiserweight division. And as we get set to begin the round, we have a timeout call by Brian Gary, the referee. They want to take some of the Vaseline off the face of Eddie Yogi Bear Neblet. Greased him up a little bit too much. Getting set for round three. The foundation being laid very cleverly by Dennis Andres, former light heavyweight champion of the world. Jab, jab, right hand has been the solution thus far as I have him with the first two rounds in the bank as for you, Charles. Yeah, but Neblet is not that far away of getting into this fight. He's been staying competitive the whole way and throwing some good body shots. You saw a good combination to the body uh, right there by Ed Neblet. Eddie Neblet has taken on some talented fighters uh, during his pro career, 13 and three with seven KOs. He was six and zero oh and fighting on ESPN when he met Terry Norris, who we all know could do some damage. And he was stopped in the sixth round in that bout by Norris. That was at 154 pounds. And that was before a lot of people knew about Terry Norris. Also, his last fight, which was about 20 months ago, he fought Anthony Logan in Jamaica and lost the 12-round decision for the Continental Americas Championship. That was at 168 pounds. Neville is a very engaging young man, very intelligent. And he told us that he's got a lot of people watching him uh, tonight at Burt's Bar down there in Barbados in his hometown of St. Michael. So uh, he wants to send a little hello and they are watching him and rooting for him tonight in what may be the biggest fight of his career. The combination by Andreas scores as Neblet was starting to gain some momentum here in the early portion of round three. The right hand has been an effective shot for Eddie Neblet tonight. He throws that right hook to the body extremely well. He's been a very patient fighter thus far. And as you said, even though the first two rounds on the scorecards appear to be Andreas's, Eddie Neblet is right there. He's by no means out of this fight. No, it's not one of those situations where Andreas is piling up all the points. Look at Neblet. He, he counters almost everything that Andreas throws at him comes back with something, which is what you're supposed to do. Your opponent throws the left jab, you got to respond with the left jab. And he's been a busy fighter, especially so here in round three. Dennis Andreas looking to load up a little bit, but Eddie Neblet has landed more scoring punches. And you notice that when Andreas throws those big punches, Neblet is sort of letting those punches slide. They maybe sound like they're making a lot of impact, but he's making the little subtle turns to the left and to the right. Those punches are not having the greatest effect. And there you saw right there, Dennis Andres putting things back on target. Goes back to the winning formula, which was jab, jab, and then the right hand. All three punches scoring, but Devlin not backing off any. And looking for an opening in Andres' defense. 
Good action in the center of the ring thus far. Both fighters still kind of feeling each other out. Approaching the closing moments of round three, we are scheduled for 10. We'll come back with round four as Schlitz Malt Liquor Fight Night heats up. Larry Chen looking for quick punches inside and a much faster pace from Eddie Neblin as we begin round four. Dennis Andres has the red trim on his trunks. Eddie Yogi Bear Neblin, the shorter of the two, and all three rounds thus far to Andres. Well, Neblin didn't mount that much of an offensive attack in that round, and Andres was much more busy and a much more aggressive there. What Kent wants Neblin to do is to continue and to even expand upon throwing the punches to the body and then coming up to the head, making Andreas make a mistake somewhere along the way where Neville can uh, land a couple of big punches to really get Andres', Andres uh, respect. Speaking of aggression and getting respect, Dennis Andres comes out firing some big shots. As we're here in round four, Neblet able to stand in there and answer back, but Andres looks like he's picking it up a notch, even though Larry Kent was telling Neblet to do that very same thing. Well, one thing you've got to look out for on the part of Neblet is, what's his stamina going to be like as we move toward the middle rounds and the latter rounds of this fight, if it goes that far, here's a guy that's carrying some extra weight on him, there's no question about it, hasn't fought at this high a weight before, is he going to be still fighting at a, a rapid pace, a crisp pace, as we're in the 8th, 9th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th round. At 35 years of age, conditioning a question with Dennis Andres, but he looks to be in excellent form, and he lands a telling blow there. Chopping right hand, and Sedlick going backwards. Sedlick gets hit again with another right hand, and Andres slowly but surely taking control of his fight. Yeah, that right hand reached right through Neblet's gloves, which are up alongside of his head. A little bit of a glassy-eyed look from Eddie Neblet. He punches against the ropes, and now he starts to rock. He's wobbling. Ryan Gary looks in. Andres looking to finish it. Goes downstairs and is unable to connect with the home run ball. But it's Andres, I think, early in this round. Came out with a new policy. He landed some big shots and comes back again. Neblet in trouble here in round four. That was a big right hand. That back to the beginning of the game. That's it. That's it. And it does not look like Neblet's getting up. And even if he does, Brian Gary has waved it off. Midway through round.